Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. If you are one of those people, when confronted with speaking, you have to speak to your boss, you have to speak to some employees, and you just kind of clam up, you feel uncomfortable. We want to talk about that today and give you that confidence and make you feel better. And she is somebody that has helped so many, so many over many years with stuttering challenges. And she's back with us today. Anna Dieter is here with livestutterfree.com. Welcome back. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Stephen. I am great. And as I already said, I'm alive. <laughs> She's alive. What's going on? Life. She's alive. What's better? What's better yes. than being alive? <laughs> I really want to dig into the the misconceptions that many people have of what stuttering is. And when we say that word, I know right away something clicks in your brain and you have this picture of what a stutterer is. What is a stutterer? Somebody who stutters. A stutterer is a person who still hasn't learned how to use his or her speech instrument in the correct way for accurate and uh, simple, easy word production. This person still doesn't know that he or she has a totally normal speech instrument, but the way he or she uses this instrument is wrong. It's just like whenever we are beginning to learn to do something new, it's normal we're making mistakes. Our first steps are always mistaken. But the more we go through the process of learning, the easier it becomes, the more control we have over our muscles that we use to perform this action. And we become masters <laughs> of performing of this skill, right? We build our skills. So people who start are this kind of people. They're still new to speaking. They're still like children. Their speaking skills are very immature, very immature. However, the problem is that they believe that they are sick, that they have some kind of a mysterious, misunderstood condition called stuttering, that they, people who stutter, are very special. They're not like all other people. Other people, yeah, they can speak well, but for some mysterious reason, they, people who stutter, stutter, <laughs> they can't do it. And this is a problem. This goes against everything that most people think, because- really? Many, many think when somebody is stuttering, it's this, not this, that's creating the issue. Exactly. And actually, this is both. <laughs> but it all begins with our body. When we cannot move our body in the way other people are moving it, normally, naturally, what do you do? You just do it again. You observe carefully. Whatever the person is doing, carefully. And you mimic, you imitate the same action with the same part of your body. And guess what? You begin doing it in exactly the same way. Because the bottom line, if you have the same muscle, of course you can learn to move it in exactly the same way. You know, I just had a thought, Anna, and the visual to illustrate this. If you look at somebody who does ballroom dancing, fluid, fantastic movements, you know, maybe they're dancing with somebody else and it's just amazing. Sometimes they were taught, sometimes they can do it naturally. They just have that rhythm. It just, they move. And then you have somebody that really can't dance and they're out there and they're awkward and they just, it's, it's just not working. It almost sounds like that's somebody who stutters. Exactly. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually have had a whole video that I recorded after I recorded myself while I was doing giving speech at Toastmasters International. Mm -hmm. The title of my speech was Speech is a Dance. 
<laughs> Someone who isn't you watching YouTube videos, just go speech is a dance and a dear at Toastmasters International and listen to this video because this is exactly right what you said and what you have described about a person who is awkward, who is moving like in a weird way. You just described me when I first joined the gym and I joined the club for Zumba. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for several years already. And now I'm very much fluid when I am dancing, when I am doing Zumba. But the moment our instructor brings the new choreography, I immediately turn into a stutterer. Immediately, I don't know what to do. My legs are strangled. My, I'm entangled. My, my. my arms go who, go, who knows where, okay? So I become a stutterer because my muscles do not have the memory of the movement. And the moment I have learned the movements of my muscles, I mean, my muscles gain this memory. I become fluid. <laughs> That's it. So speaking is instrumental. And this is so important to understand. It's instrumental action. It's not something we're born with. It's something that we get through genes. It's instrumental. We all must learn it. And we learn how to move our speech muscle, which is the tongue. <laughs> people are, very often I communicate with people who start and when they come to me and I point to my tongue, they go, huh, the tongue? Yeah, guess what? <laughs> this is the only muscle we use when we speak, the tongue. So this is why the moment your tongue gains the memory of the movements for each and every word, that's it. These movements will never change. You just need to move and move and move your tongue again and again, again and again, and fall in love with speaking. Why is it that some people can speak very clearly? fluidly, no training whatsoever, and others have challenges? It's a very simple answer. Why is it some people can swim fluidly, no training, just drop them in the water and they swim? Does it happen, actually? <laughs> and other people... Now, wait, it depends on how you look at that. That You can take a baby and it will instinctively know what to do more times than not to bring itself up and... And exactly, exactly. But again, the question is this, why is it that there are 90 year old people who don't know still how to swim, but at the same time, the baby can swim, no problem. The baby that the parent, parents, for example, teach how to swim, and this baby can swim like a fish. Why? Because speech is not a speaking skills or any muscular skill. It's a skill that we need to learn. The more time we repeat this movement, we build all the neuron connections in our brain, la la la. And that's it. We just do it again and again. Why some people learn and other people don't? There could be thousands of reasons, millions of reasons. We all live different lives. But in case of people who stutter, I can tell you why. We live in a crazy world. There are wars around. There are bombs exploding. People are, just do all kinds of strange things today. Parents do all kinds of strange things with their children. I just recall the time when I once was involved in the Facebook discussion and it was the group where parents were complaining about their children being diagnosed with a speech delay. And I remember one mother wrote, I don't know why my child has been diagnosed with a speech delay. And I immediately asked her, how much do you spend? 
how much time do you spend with your child talking to your child? Mm. How much do you sit down at the dinner table like we did in the old times and talk to each other? Or do you buy speaking devices to your child? Does your child look cartoons and imitate cartoons? <laughs> Where characters speak with a high-pitched voice. And then they say, why my child sounds like autistic child? Why? Because he imitates cartoons. He doesn't hear a normal speaking around. I mean, you see how I jump from one topic to another topic? Because it's so much today. If you are lucky and you are born to the family where your parents speak well, when there are no fear, there is no fear in your family that it's going to be explosion somewhere or something terrible will happen, then, of course, you're going to be looking at your parents and imitating the movements of your parents' tongue. And that's it. You will never grow up and believe that you may be sick <laughs> called stuttering. You may have an incurable sickness called stuttering. You will never even know about it. But if you're not lucky, you're born to the family that don't, doesn't even have time for a child. Now, Anna, it is possible that somebody had parents who were very vocal. They always spoke with their children. They spoke very well. Mom and dad, fantastic. Sounds great. It is possible that their child could have a stuttering, stuttering issue, correct? Of course. And I think I've talked about it last show. The truth of the matter is all children are stutterers. All, no exception. Because stuttering is what? immature skill to say words accurately with ease. It's immaturity. So a child is born with empty memory here, empty memory here. A child doesn't know anything. And a child begins to learn. And the first thing he does makes mistakes. Here is the parent's role to be the best role model for your child. And never, ever tell your child, shut up. You're too noisy. I think we've talked about that, right? Sure. Before. Or, for example, if the mother and the father are PhD professor at the, professors at the universities, they've been lecturing, they've been talking for the whole day. They're perfect speakers, la, la, la. And then they come home and they go, you know what? Leave me alone. I want to rest. And the child, mommy, daddy, read me the book or talk to me. You know what? Go watch cartoons. Go watch TV or something. And the child again gets the message. My mommy and daddy don't want me to speak. They want me to be quiet. And children always want to please their parents. And then in this kind of families, Yes, it's possible. Mommy and daddy speak well, but the child doesn't speak. He doesn't develop his speaking skills. Never That's had an it. opportunity. Yeah, no opportunity. And then when opportunity comes up, a parent wants the child to speak like them. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Oh, I had that visual just as you said that. We're, okay, the child never has the opportunity to speak. And then let's say it's a holiday dinner. Honey, here, read this passage from this holiday book for everybody. Mm -hmm. And the child is either petrified or stumbles through it. And then it becomes awkward. Everybody can't understand why Junior can't read or speak clearly. And then it's on them. But it's really the parents that we're telling Junior, be quiet, be quiet until that moment. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I would love to talk about reality today. Sometimes it's really hard to talk about it because people get this so-called cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. 
when I talk about it and when I share this information, people simply go, no, this is not true because it doesn't fit my mindset. It just does not. I mean, cannot be true. And I'm talking about one of my books. Okay, I would love to explain that the whole idea of stuttering has been invented. And I know exactly in what year, when it was invented, stuttering as a sickness, some kind of mysterious sickness. And those of our listeners who cannot see me holding the book, I'm going to just tell you that I have a book called A Tale of Two Geniuses in Stuttering, how one Russian genius invented and the other one debunked their false stuttering illness. This is the reality. And what's interesting is that if you do not understand Russian, if you do not read Russian language, you will not be able to find this information in English language. Because I stumbled on this truth when I studied the documents, historical documents that I was able to get to in Russian language. So here is a simple truth. Stuttering as a mysterious sickness has been invented in 1889. 1889, and a gentleman who was financed to invent this mental illness or whatever, psychological illness, whatever they call it. He lived in capital of Ukraine. Today, everyone knows that there is such a country, Ukraine. Capital of Ukraine, the city of Kiev. By the way, my father was born in the city of Kiev. Okay. So, and back then it was the capital of Russia, but <laughs> people don't even know that. So the bottom line, this man has been, was financed to invent all kinds of mental sicknesses. Stuttering was one of them. He created this idea that lack of a skill to move the tongue for accurate word production could be a mysterious sickness. He did it. And then, I mean, I want you to download this book from my website, livestarterfree.com. Download it and read it. You are going to be blown away with the way it was done 140 years ago, almost. <laughs> okay, a long time ago. And since that time, this organization, I don't know what kind of organizations, by the way, this gentleman was part of the Freemason organization. He was there. Okay. In Russian, you can find it all. So the bottom line, I just found amazing information about this person, about his personality. He actually was also... He was a psychiatrist, not a speech professional. He was a psychiatrist, and he also was a dirty politician. <laughs> and and I got to double check here. This is a true story. Yep. This is a true story. But in order to double check, you got to read my book or read Russian language. Because, yes, if you are Russian, you can go, you can put his name Ivan Sikorsky, you can put this name in Google in Russian language. And yes, you can find this information. But in English, go to Wikipedia. His name is not even in blue. You know what I mean? It's not even a link. The only information you can find in Wikipedia, if you go and search for his son's name, son's name, Dmitry Sikorsky. And many of our listeners may be familiar with this name because Dmitry Sikorsky was an inventor Helicopter. of the first 
Exactly. Sure. For, for military services, for killing people again. The same family. <laughs> okay. For yes. And if you go and look for Dmitry Sikorsky, yes, the name of Ivan Sikorsky will be there. But they're gonna just say that he is a, he was a psychiatrist. That's it. They don't say that he was the father of stuttering, and that. I mean, in this book, I explain how it went. It started in Russia, and then how it continued in the United States of America. Who were the founding fathers in the United States of America? I know exactly when. People who started, a group of people who started, became, learned to be speech therapists and how they just were financed to start all the stuttering foundations, stuttering associations. I mean, it's fascinating. <laughs> so <laughs> this individual, all these years ago, created the fallacy that stuttering is a mental illness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where it perpetuated all these years. And then you see it in media and TV shows. It all started there. Yeah, it all started there. 1889. I know exact year. Of course, people who wouldn't be speaking well, they've been around. I mean, always because it's a skill. And yeah, there are people who speak more or less. And there are better speakers, worse speakers. This is the case, just like. Anything else, there are better swimmers, worse swimmers, better dancers, worse dancers. But not to learn how to dance, how to move your muscles and tell to the world that this is a sickness. Mm. <laughs> this is a crime against humanity. This is my understanding. But it's really hard for people to take, really hard. Because, I mean, when I talk about it, people don't believe it. People don't believe that someone out there wearing the white robe may not have their interest in his heart or her heart. Maybe they do, but they don't know. The story that I'm telling you, speech therapists, speech pathologists, psychologists, they're not aware of this. They also don't know because in all these years, the whole industry has been invented. The whole industry. I can't it's imagine being in those times, let's say the late 1800s or the, the early 1900s. Now we have, you can Google, you can search, you can learn. But back then it must've been so horrible where where this was perpetuated and there's, you know, there's Johnny and he can't speak fluently. And, you know, he's afraid. And, and you know what? If you, if Johnny cannot speak fluently, nobody would tell him that he was sick. Nobody. They would just say, go learn words. <laughs> That's it. I mean, this is natural. You don't know how to move your tongue to say the word. Even today, for most of us, this is not a problem. And thank God to Google Translate today. If I don't know how to say the word in English language, of course, I speak English as a second language. I'll just open Google Translate. I'll just enter the word, listen how it sounds, move my tongue to mimic it, and that's it. I'm not sick <laughs> if I don't know how to move my tongue. But people believe that. We have... Uh, about a minute left. Let's tell everybody if they are experiencing challenges, making sounds, the confidence that you have when you speak clearly, or maybe you know somebody, maybe it's your child. Where does it start? Livestutterfree.com. Somebody goes to the website and where does it begin from there, Anna? Livestutterfree.com. Everywhere has the little link where it says, watch the webinar. Watch the webinar. So click on this link register for watching the webinar and i do recommend watch the whole thing because this is the truth that will completely change your life and after watching the webinar the system will take you to my scheduling page you can schedule a video call this is very important 
video call where I can look at you. I can determine what your blocks are and direct you to the right path to your start of free life forever in only three days. Fantastic. And what we said earlier in terms of the ballroom and the analogy there, make your tongue dance. <laughs> <laughs> really what it is. But in order to do that, you got to know what the dancing movements are. You got to know that. Absolutely. You got to train your tongue. If you put me on a ballroom floor right now, it's not something you want to watch because <laughs> I can't. I know I can't unless I have the training. If you Exactly. We can do and, anything if you have the training. And the feelings people have when they are put on spot Let's say on the, even on the dance floor and everyone is watching, people feel awkward. People don't feel really comfortable. This is the feeling all people who start to have. A hundred percent, especially when you got to speak in front of somebody or a group of people. And Live they call it a sickness. They call it incurable illness. So wrong. Livestutterfree.com. Anna, great having you on again. Thank you for having me. See you Bye. next week. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.